हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टीच यू ऑन लेक्टेशन लेक्टेशन कोलेस्ट्रम इज द इनिशियल सिक्रीशन व्हिच आर रिलीज्ड फ्रॉम द ब्रेस्ट दिस सिक्रीशन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम प्रेगनेंसी ओनली एंड दे कंटिन्यू फॉर द फर्स्ट थ्री टू फोर डेज दैट फ्लूड इज कॉल्ड एज कोलेस्ट्रम नाउ कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ कोलेस्ट्रम इट इज नॉट लाइक मिल्क बट इट इज डीप येलो सीरस एल्कलाइन काइंड ऑफ फ्लूड its difference from the milk are it has got more of proteins vitamin a sodium and chloride and as compared to the breast milk it has got less of carbohydrates fats and potassium colostrum is also rich in iga complement macrophages lymphocytes and humoral factors like lactoferrin and enzymes called as lactoperoxidase so these this is the composition of colostrum and how is it it is different from the normal breast milk advantages are that it has got the it it plays an important role in the immunological defense because it contains the iga complements macrophages which have got a role in immunological defense and also it has got a laxative effect because of the fat globules in it i have expressed over here that it has got lesser carbohydrates but fat but this doesn't mean that fat is absent fat is present in the form of fat globules and which play a role in the laxative effect but it is lesser than the normal breast milk now talking about physiology of lactation it is divided into four parts first is a stage of mammogenesis second lactogenesis third galactokinesis and fourth is galactopoiesis so mammogenesis this is a stage of preparation of the breast it starts from pregnancy itself there is increase in the ductal lobulo alveolar structure of the breast so there are changes that is anatomical and physiological changes in the duct lobules and alveoli of the breast which starts from pregnancy itself means preparing the breast for production of milk and further the process of lactation so mammogenesis in sum is the preparation part of the breast which starts from pregnancy itself second is a stage of lactogenesis now initial 3 two to 3 days as i told you it is a colostrum which is secreted from the breast which has got important immunological benefits after third to fourth day the normal breast milk start expre- formation and expressing so lactogenesis is the stage which now comes into role in lactogenesis there is synthesis and secretions from the breast that is the breast milk now what happens level of prolactin prolactin is the important hormone which acts which play an important role in this stage levels of prolactin are responsible for the milk secretions from the breast but prolactin levels are increased in pregnancy as well but alveoli alveolar cells of the breast they do not respond to the increased prolactin hence the production of milk is not seen as in lactation as after the delivery it is not seen during pregnancy the reason for this is non responsiveness ya unresponsiveness of alveolar cells to prolactin but after the delivery there is fall in estrogen and progesterone during pregnancy the levels of estrogen and progesterone are very high which are responsible for non responsiveness of alveolar cells for the increased amount of prolactin what i meant over here is that prolactin is increased in pregnancy also but alveolar cells don't respond to the increased prolactin because of increased level of estrogen and progesterone hormone but as soon as the patient delivers the baby these levels start falling after the delivery and by third to fourth day we find that the levels are quite less there is reduction in estrogen and progesterone level so now the alveolar cell respond to the high levels of prolactin along with that the hormones like insulin glucocorticoids thyroxin and growth hormone they all are responsible for the responsiveness of alveolar cells to prolactin and prolactin is the milk secreting hormone 
so there is secretion of the milk from the epithelial lining of the alveoli of breast so when the the breast start producing milk what changes occur in the breast that is there is fullness kind of feeling fullness of the breast is felt by the female who has just delivered the breast are enlarged they become warm they become tense they become tender but that is a difference but ideally the temperature is not that much raised that we say that it is inf inflamed or inflammation but the fullness of breast with the milk makes it heavier warm and a little tense and tender but it is all under a comfortable zone it is not uncomfortable for the female now third is a stage of galactokinesis so we have seen mammogenesis lactogenesis means breast preparation and then milk production now milk production has occurred now it has to be ejection of the milk so the third stage is galactokinesis which is ejection of the milk so here the hormone is oxytocin which is also called as milk ejection or milk let down hormone so it is released from posterior pituitary now this is the reflex arc which happens there is suckling the suckling reflex goes to the alveoli and from the alveoli uh, where the milk is produced there is contractile mechanism of the alveolus and milk is released into into the ducts lactiferous duct and it is discharged from the nipples so what is the arc this arc is called as milk let down reflex or milk ejection reflex when the child sucks the nipple and the areolar region areolar region is the pigmented zone near the nipple the reflexes are carried by the neurons that is at the level of thyroidic th th t4 t5 and t6 efferent nerves these are these nerves are going to carry the reflex to the hypothalamus at the supra optic nuclei of the hypothalamus and this was this will send messages to the posterior pituitary now posterior pituitary then releases oxytocin which is released in the blood now this is the efferent arc means taking the message and the efferent arc is made by that is the blood the oxytocin is released in the blood now oxytocin has got the effect of contraction so it causes a contraction of the myoepithelial cells of the alveoli and thus release the milk which is stored in the alveoli to the ducts so now milk goes to the ampulla of lactiferous duct and so it is released through the nipple and baby can suck the milk this is called as milk let down your milk reflex arc okay now there are few reflexes also which are responsible for ejection or let down of milk for example when a mother hears a baby crying there is spontaneously the arc is stimulated and there is release of milk or let down of milk few reflexes are there which which are responsible for reduction in the milk ejection for example pain anxiety depression depression of the delivery or the mother is anxious whether she is able to feed properly or not or other things she is worried about or she is in pain after the delivery there are stitches because of that she can be in pain or many a times the breast is so much full that the breast themselves are tender and engorged then as soon as the baby sucks patient feels pain the female fp feels pain so they are a kind of hindrance they reduce this ejection of milk and are responsible for reduction of milk ejection now so we have seen the three stages mammogenesis lactogenesis galactokinesis so galactokinesis is the ejection of milk and the four stages galactopoiesis that is maintenance of lactation now this thing from pregnancy onwards prolactin responsible for milk production oxytocin responsible for ejection of milk now it has to be maintained so prolactin keeps on producing here prolactin uh, plays again an important role in continuous production of milk but for continuous maintenance what is more important is suckling also means a baby should be put to the chest and there should be frequent suckling reflex to generate the further milk ejection and production because we all know there is positive and negative feedback mechanism whenever the milk is ejected down from the nipple more will be the production but if suppose milk is not ejected 
and it remains in the alveoli and breast are engorged this will produce a negative feedback mechanism and by that the alveoli of the the epithelium of the alveoli will reduce the milk production so as a result of it slowly the milk production will stop it will not be continued for a longer duration so for that frequency of suckling is very important and it is suggested that at least 8 times a mother should feed the baby but it can be more also 8 is no fixed time it is more of demand feeding whenever the baby requires but at least it should be 8 times in 24 hours for maintaining this reflex arc and continuous production of milk and its ejection many a times if the patient has fed the baby and still she feels that the breasts are heavy she is asked to express the milk which can be done manually or with the help of breast pump what is the need for periodic breast feeding as i already told you if the alveoli are full and milk is not ejected down the epithelium there will be negative feedback mechanism and it will reduce the milk production and secretion and will result in lactational failure in a day a female basically produces 500 to 800 ml per day of milk is uh, ejected from the breast and for that she also needs more of calories than her normal diet of about 500 to 700 kilo calories so she should be getting a good high cal high nutritious diet at the time of lactation so it is not only pregnancy but lactation is also a very important period because she is feeding a baby rooming in is a policy in which the baby is placed along with the mother even after a normal delivery the female is asked to start feeding in half an hour to 1 hour of the delivery there is warmth and there is sharing of bond between the mother and the newborn this is called as rooming in phenomena and after cesarean also patient is asked to start feeding whenever she feels comfortable or at least by 4 hours after the cesarean when the effects of drug wanes off and rooming and uh, proper in during pregnancy and later on also the patient is advised about positioning the baby that is the nipple and areola complex complete it should be uh, inside the baby's mouth for proper uh, ejection of milk and proper positioning of the baby exclusive breast feeding is continued for 6 months that means no honey no water no top feeds have to give, be given in the first 6 months and female is asked to take plenty of fluids in many conditions the lactation has to be suppressed that we do not want the female should have further she should be breastfeeding suppose the baby died in the early neonatal period or it was a intrauterine death and the baby is not alive so in those cases we don't want that female sh there should be breast secretions or milk production so we have got many drugs which are there for suppression of milk as well as we ask the female to have tight breast support she may be given pain killers to uh, stop the engorgement of the breast she is advised not to express the milk and many medicines are also there which can be given to further stop the production of milk in the breast thank you so much children